Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's video I want to talk to you about a nice gotcha of the Airbus non-precision approach system. And this applies to any non-precision approach or any approach that is not an ILS. Now, you all are familiar with the localizer and the glide slope scales of the Airbus primary flight display. Right, so you got a certain piece of separation there or a certain um, angle within which the system is going to um, give you your localizer and glide slope indications. And since it is based on an angle, much rather than based on an actual um, altitude or mileage of deviation, you are going to see differences in the deviation indications the further out from the airport you are. In other words, this means that the closer you get, the um, greater the deviations for the same amount of altitude that you deviate from the target path. Things are a little bit different for non-precision approaches. In particular, if we have a look at the vertical deviation indication here, also called the vertical deviation scale and index. So, contrary to the glide slope needle on the vertical deviation scale, you don't have an angular behavior, but much rather you have a fixed scale of 100 feet on the first dot and 200 feet on the second dot. Now, why is this such an important gotcha? Basically, because if a pilot flies the approach manually and accepts the standard deviation that you also have on your ILS approach as a given deviation on the non-precision approach, you might just about end up crashing before the runway. Now, why is that? Well, let's have a look at the system this way. We have 100 feet deviation on this first dot over here. If you remember your basic ATBL theory, you are normally used to a maximum allowable deviation of one dot. But if you follow an ILS, and have one dot deviation very short to the runway, that's only going to be a couple feet deviation from the actual intended flight path. On the other end side, if you fly a non-precision approach and if you follow the deviation of one dot, you are going to be 100 feet below the profile. On a three degree glide slope, 100 feet means a deviation of 0.3 nautical miles. In other words, taking into account standard runway design, where you have about a 300 meters displaced aiming point towards the runway threshold. 300 meters is roughly half of the deviation of 0.33 nautical miles, which equals 100 feet deviation. And therefore, you are going to end up crashing approximately 300 meters before the runway threshold. Now, Let's go ahead and have a look at how that looks like in practical terms over here. I'm going to disconnect the autopilot for this approach and turn off the flight director. And now let's go ahead and deviate from the profile. Likewise, let's go ahead and start extending the flaps. So now we are one dot below at about six nautical miles. Now, this is not all too much of a problem. If you look ahead, you will actually see that the Papi shows us on three reds at the moment, but it's not all that much of a problem. Let's go ahead and fly ourselves back into the profile, and then we are going to repeat that very same exercise a little bit later as we get closer to the runway, and then we're going to see what kind of deviation we will see as we are closer to the runway. Now, of course, this is an A319, that means it is rather difficult to slow this one down on the final over here, so nothing to worry about that. So we are now about 4 miles from the runway. Let's go ahead and fly ourselves in a little bit closer. You can see roughly 30 feet deviation up there. The puppy shows us on 3 reds, but might always be a little deviation thanks to Microsoft Flight Simulator's inaccuracies involved over here as well. Okay, so. Let's go a little bit high on profile right now. Let's go 100 feet high on profile and have a look at what is going to happen in response to that. So I'm going to fly myself one dot above the target brick over here. In 
you can see that now, three miles out, flying one dot above the brick, actually shows us that we're right on the puppy. Now, this is a little flight simulator inaccuracy here, nothing to worry about. But if you look outside the window, you can see that things look a little bit strange, don't they? We do seem to appear a little bit high. Now let's go ahead and fly ourselves right back into the brick. And here we are, right back on the brick. You can see this is a normal approach profile. And now, let's fly ourselves 100 feet below the brick. And this is the very danger that this entire problem involves. If you just look outside the window, you can see that we are coming in really low, aren't we? Even though, looking at the instrument scale, if you compare this to an ILS and don't know how the display works, things might look rather normal. So as you can see, this is really the problem of the vertical deviation scale. Now let's fly ourselves back into the brick and just see how slow it responds and compare that to how your standard ILS scale would respond. You can really see the difference here and this is a really important Airbus gotcha that you should be aware of when you are doing your non-precision approaches in this aircraft. So let's go ahead and land this aircraft now. 30, 20, so right onto the markers. So, spoilers, reverse green, diesel. Alright guys, I do hope that you found this one interesting. This is surely something you should be aware of as an Airbus pilot. And with all of that out of the way, thank you very much for watching. Let me know your feedback in the comments below. And I'm really looking forward to your opinion on this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. And in the meantime, if you liked the video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing on the channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me a Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and I see you all again on the next one.